guys, welcome. Thank you for joining me. We are um, starting lesson eight today. So lesson eight will cover Romeo and Juliet, act four, scenes four and five. Thank you for joining me. We are reading this with the permission of Simon and Schuster. Let's get started. Spices, nurse. They call for dates and quinces in the pastry. Come, stir, stir, stir. The second cock hath crowed. The curfew bell hath rung. Tis three o'clock. Look to the baked meats, good Angelica. Spare not for cost. Okay, so first question, and write this in your chat box, is what time is it? What time is it where this is taking place? He just said it, so go ahead and write that in your chat box. Go, oh, you cot queen, go. Get you to bed. Faith, you'll be sick tomorrow for this night's watching. No, not a whit. What, I have watched ere now all night for lesser cause and ne'er been sick. Aye, uh, you have been a mouse hunt in your time, but I will watch you from such watching now. A jealous hood, a jealous hood. Now, fellow, what is there? Uh, things for the cook, sir, but I know not what. Make haste, make haste. Sarah, fetch dryer logs. Call Peter. He will show thee where they are. I have a head, sir, that will find out logs and never trouble Peter for the matter. Ah, and well said. A merry horse, and ha, thou shalt be loggerhead. Good faith, tis day. The county will be here with music straight. For so he said he would, I hear him near. Nurse! Wife! What ho! What nurse, I say! Go waken Juliet. Go and trim her up. I'll go and chat with Paris. Hi, make haste. Make haste. The bridegroom, he has come already. Make haste, I say. All right, so given that most of you answered correctly and said it was 3 a.m. in the morning, given that it's 3 a.m. in the morning and Paris just showed up, um, what does that tell us about Paris? Go ahead and write that in your answers and your chat box. What does it tell us about Paris? What does it tell us about how Paris feels? Um, how he feels about this wedding? We, of course, know that Juliet took that vial, right? That was at the end of the last scene. Paris is super happy to marry Juliet. He is overjoyed. He's anxious. He probably just wants, you know, to arrive before sunrise is a big deal. So he's very excited to marry Juliet. Um, a lot of times, because this is called Romeo and Juliet, right? Not um, Juliet and Paris or Paris and Juliet. A lot of times students talk about how much they really hate Paris. But I mean, think about it. Paris is kind of like an innocent in all of this. He doesn't really know what's happening with Juliet. He has been lied to. He you know, he really hasn't done anything wrong. He's just this guy who wants to marry a pretty girl. And this was done very often during that time where, you know, and he followed all the protocol. He went to the father, he asked for her hand in marriage. Um, so don't be so hard on Paris because I feel like poor Paris got caught, caught up in the crossfire here. Okay, let's listen. Mistress? What? Mistress? Juliet? Oh, fast, I warrant her. She... Why, lamb, why, lady? Fie, you slug abed. Why, love, I say. Madam? Sweetheart? Why, bride? What, not a word? You take your pennyworths now, sleep for a week. For the next night, I warrant, the county Paris hath set up his rest, that you shall rest but little. <laughs> oh, God forgive me, marry and amen. How sound is she asleep? I needs must wake her. Madam, madam, madam! Hi, let the county take you in your bed. He'll fright you up a faith, will it not be? What? Dressed? And in your clothes, and down again, I must needs wake you, lady. Lady! Lady! Alas! Alas! Help! Who is the first to find Juliet? Go ahead and write your answer in the chat box. And that makes sense that this person is the first. Yes, absolutely. The nurse is the first to find her. It makes perfect sense that the nurse would be the first to find her because she's probably the person who's the closest to her. Let's listen. Help! My lady's dead! 
Oh, were a day that ever I was born, some aqua vitae, ho! Oh, my lord, my lady! What noise is here? Oh, lamentable day! What is the matter? Look, look! Oh, heavy day! Oh, me! Oh, me, my child! My only life revive! Look up, or I will die with thee! Help! Help! Call help! For shame! Bring Juliet forth, her lord is come. She's dead, deceased, she's dead, alack the day. Alack the day, she's dead, she's dead, she's dead. Ah, let me see her. Out. Alas, she's cold. Her blood is settled and her joints are stiff. Life in these lips have long... In what three, what three things does Capulet say that he could tell that she's dead because of? What three things does she have or what three qualities does she possess right now that really indicate and confirm to Capulet that she is dead? What is it that he's seeing? Go ahead and write that down in your chat box. Yeah, so if you're saying that her joints are stiff, that she's cold, um, um, that her blood has settled, that's called rigor mortis, that's something that happens after death, um, then you're absolutely right. So rigor is starting to set in and um, he could tell that his daughter is dead. Long been separated. Death lies on her like an untimely frost upon the sweetest flower of all the fields. Oh, lamentable day. Oh, woeful time. Death that attain her hence to make me wail ties up my tongue and will not let me speak. Come, is the bride ready to go to church? Ready to go, but never to return. Oh, son, the night before thy wedding day hath death lain with thy wife. There she lies, flower as she was deflowered by him. Death is my son-in-law, death is my heir. My daughter he hath wedded. I will die and leave him all. Life, living, all is death's. Have I thought long to see this morning's face? And doth it give me such a sight as this? A cursed, unhappy, wretched, hateful day. Most miserable hour that e'er time saw in lasting labor of his pilgrimage. But one, poor one, one poor and loving child. But one thing to rejoice and solace in. And cruel death hath catched it from my sight. Oh, woe, oh, woeful, woeful, woeful day, most lamentable day, most woeful day that ever, ever I did yet behold. Oh, day, oh, day, oh, day, oh, hateful day, never was seen so black a day as this. Oh, woeful day, oh, woeful day. Beguiled, divorced, wronged, spited, slain, most detestable death by thee beguiled. By cruel, cruel thee quite overthrown. Oh, love, oh, life, not life, but love in death. Despised, distressed, hated, martyred, killed. Uncomfortable time, why camest thou now to murder, murder our solemnity? Oh, child, oh, child. My soul, and not my child, dead art thou. Alack, my child is dead, and with my child my joys are buried. Peace, ho, oh, for shame. Confusion's cure lives not in these confusions. Heaven. And the friar comes in now, so I want you to pay attention and listen to what the friar tells them to do with her body. So that's our next question. What does the friar tell them to do with her body? And yourself had part in this fair maid. Now heaven hath all, and all the better is it for the maid. Your part in her you could not keep from death, but heaven keeps his part in eternal life. The most you sought was her promotion, for twas your heaven she should be advanced. And weep you now, seeing she is advanced above the clouds, as high as heaven itself? Oh, in this love you love your child so ill that you run mad, seeing that she is well. She's not well married that lives married long, but she's best married that dies married young. 
dry up your tears and stick your rosemary on this fair course and, as the custom is, and in her best array, bear her to church. For though fond nature bids us all lament, yet nature's tears are reason's merriment. All right, so what does he tell them to do with her body? What does he say to get her what? Go ahead and write that in your chat box. He says yes, so he says um, get her ready, get her dressed, basically in like her wedding dress, and take her to church, basically. Get her dressed, take her to church. So that's all part of the plan, right? So, so far, no issues. All things that we ordained festival turn from their office to black funeral. Our instruments to melancholy bells, our wedding cheer to a sad burial feast, our solemn hymns to sullen dirges change, our bridal flowers serve for a buried course, and all things change them to the contrary. So I want you to listen to what the friar's words are here. What does the friar say? Because in a sly way, he kind of blames Juliet's parents for her death, for her lifelessness. Lifelessness, yeah. So um, listen to what the friar actually says here because it's quite interesting. He's like, I think you guys say throwing shade or shading or I don't know. You guys say something to that extent. Sir, go you in, and madam, go with him, and go, Sir Paris, everyone prepare to follow this fair course unto her grave. The heavens do lower upon you for some ill, move them no more by crossing their high will. Faith, we may put up our pipes. What did he just say there? The heavens? The heavens do lower upon you for some ill, move them no more by crossing their high will. So basically, you must have done something to deserve this. What is it that you did to deserve this? Don't do any more, don't make it any worse than it is because you wouldn't want to anger the heavens, right? Now let's listen to this. And be gone. Honest good fellows, ah, put up, put up, for well you know this is a pitiful case. Aye, by my troth, the case may be amended. Musicians, oh, musicians, heart's ease, heart's ease. Oh, and you will have me live, play heart's ease. Okay, so... <laughs> There's this heart-wrenching scene between the Capulets um, and, you know, they're seeing their daughter's body, their daughter is dead, and everybody kind of exits, and then these musicians come in who have been hired to play for the wedding. And so now I want you to think about why does Shakespeare end this very heavy, emotionally wrenching because parents you know, watching their daughter die or seeing their daughter dead is emotionally wrenching scene with this very odd exchange between Peter and the musicians. So think about it as you're listening to the exchange, as you're listening to the, the, the audio here, think about why does Shakespeare decide to end this very emotional scene in this way. Why heart's ease? Oh, musicians, because my heart itself plays, my heart is full. Oh, play me some merry dump to comfort me. Not a dump, weed. It's no time to play now. You will not, then? No. I will then give it you soundly. What will you give us? No money on my face, but the gleek I will give you, the minstrel. Then will I give you the serving creature. Then will I lay the serving creature's dagger on your pate. I will carry no crotchets. I'll ray you. I'll fire you. Do you note me? And you ray us and fire us. You note us. Pray you, put up your dagger and put out your wit. Then have at you with my wit. I will dry beat you with an iron wit and put up my iron dagger. Answer me like men. When griping griefs the heart doth wound and doleful dumps the mind oppress, then music with her silver sound. Oh, why silver sound? Why music with her silver sound? 
What say you, Simon Catling? Mary, sir, because silver hath a sweet sound. Great! What say you, Hugh Rebeck? I say silver sound because musicians sound for silver. Great, too. What say you, James Soundpost? Faith, I know not what to say. Oh, I cry you mercy. You are the singer. I will say for you, it is music with her silver sound because musicians have no gold for sounding. Then music with her silver sound. With speedy help doth lend redress. What a pestilent knave is this, say? Hang him, Jack. Come, we'll in here tarry for the mourners and stay dinner. Okay, so um, that's a very interesting way to end the scene. Um, why would Shakespeare decide to end the scene in that way? And so there's probably two major reasons. The first one is, um, it's like a little comedy sketch at the end of a heart-wrenching scene. But the first one is, is Juliet really dead? Yes or no? Go ahead and write that in your chat box. Um, and if you're saying, no, Juliet's not even really dead, so why are we like weeping and crying over Juliet's death? Then you're probably right. So that might be a reason why Shakespeare inserted this comical and kind of comedy scene and exchange between Peter and the musicians at this point. So A, Juliet's not even really dead. So why are we, I mean, it's not really even time to cry yet now, right? Because she's, this is just her pretending. And then B, what are the musicians versus what are Romeo and Juliet? So we know that Juliet is higher class, right? Like she's rich and they've got money and they're traumatized because they're going through this, but you know, they're rich. And musicians are talking about silver and they're talking about, but are we still getting paid for the wedding? Like, are you still paying us for the wedding? Should we still play? Like what? So the musicians are talking about, are, there, are they still going to make the money that they need to make? Basically, musicians back then, and as many musicians nowadays, unless you're uh, famous, uh, struggle, right? They're struggling entertainers and they're trying to just earn a day's wage. So Shakespeare is kind of making a commentary here saying, hey, these are rich people problems. We have real problems, you know, our real problems are, are we going to get paid so that we can eat today? These rich people and their weird problems and, you know, so Shakespeare's doing two things. Number one, he's reminding us that Juliet is not really dead. And number two, he's reminding us of the differences between the social classes, the, the difference between rich people problems and poor people problems, because a lot of times there is a big difference between the two. All right, guys, this is the end of act four. Um, we are really quickly approaching the end. So I'm hoping tomorrow you'll join me for our Zoom. Not tomorrow, on Friday, you'll join me for our Zoom as we're going to have a viewing party. We're going to watch the first part of the Romeo and Juliet film. So get your popcorn, get your cozy blanket, and we'll watch that together, guys. But that's it for today. So let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to be on Edsby all day today. I'm actually making, writing some emails as we speak. Let me know if you, if you need anything from me, if you have any questions. Guys, take care. Bye.